Hi Bharat, am I audible? Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, you are audible. Actually, my headphones. I don't know. It was working. It's not working. No problem. Okay. Yeah. Right. Hi. Hi, hi. I'm Sumita. Hi, Sumita. <clears throat> So we'll just we'll begin at twelve. If that's fine. Yeah, yeah, no issues. Yeah. You are based out of Bangalore, Chennai. 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 Okay. Yeah. <coughs> Okay, we'll begin then. Yeah, yeah, good to go. Good afternoon, everyone. And uh, I'm Sumita Menon. I'm publication manager at Clever Fox Publishing. And um, welcome to all those of you who have joined us today at this Insta Live session hosted by Clever Fox Publishing, where we will be in conversation with uh, Bharat Shanoi, author of the book Three Shoes and a Flip Flop. So welcome, Bharat. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you, Savita. Thank you. My pleasure. So before I pose very specific questions to you, I would like mm -hmm. to share a brief um, uh, in background about you with our viewers. Bharat is a Bangalore-based professional born and brought up in Katpadi, Udupi. He did his mechanical engineering and later uh, PGD MIB and from Bangalore. He has corporate experience of over 10 years and currently works as an analyst in a leading market research firm. He's handled market research for multiple countries. Outside the regular corporate life, Bhar Bharat loves singing, photography, and writing scripts for short films and ads. He, along with his wife, Divya, who is also connected to media and entertainment industry, and his team have directed multiple short films their short film, Anubhuti, was nominated as one of the top shots by Best of India Short Film Festival by Shots TV in 2018. His clicks on the designer collection Fantasies of Geisha were covered in Lifestyle Deck and Herald. Bharat and his wife Divya are aspiring movie directors. Bharat wrote his first book, Story Behind the Notes, in 2021. The story emphasized on dreams and dedication towards your dreams. It also emphasized on friendship and the positivity it brings in a person's life. The book was an Amazon bestseller. And now he has released his second book, Three Shoes and a Flip Flop, which revolves around four backpackers who stay together in a hostel in Goa. So, um, Bharat, I'm going to pose some questions to you. This is going to be a conversation where we look forward to getting to know you better as a writer and also to understand the process behind the writing of Three Shoes and a Flip Flop. Sure, Sumita. Yeah. So, uh, Bharat, I always ask this question to more, a lot of authors because it interests me personally. What inspired you to be a writer and what motivated you to pursue a career in writing? Uh, actually, writing, I mean, I, I liked writing uh, since actually I, I've started writing since my school days, actually. I mean, I, I used to write short stories, etc. Then I lost touch. But uh, then gradually after I think after our wedding, uh, we started writing uh, stories for like short films, etc. We have got loads of them, uh, which haven't been converted into short film, but because it's it's difficult to uh, get a team in place and then execute it because a lot of collective works, you are involved with a lot of people, right? Everyone yeah. should spare time, etc. So uh, it's a long process, tedious process, but as a writer, 
uh you are dependent on yourself so you don't you're not dependent on anyone else at least uh, for the writing process then you obviously you need a publisher you need distributors etc but during the as a writer for me i i definitely discuss with my wife who's also into write uh, writing and storytelling but uh, yeah i mean i'm not dependent on like many number of people initially oh. so that kind of uh, triggered me and i think in main thing was like during covid when we were restricted i was a lot into photography and uh, uh, like these things but uh, during covid we were like restricted to our homes we didn't know what to do couldn't yes. go out yes. and uh, that's yeah that's when i decided i'll uh, use it for something different so i thought of writing oh. one of my friends actually uh, he's an author actually uh, one of the he's authored more than 5 6 books uh, called tanmay and he uh, yeah he, to- he told me i can give it a shot and that's when i started story behind the notes yeah wonderful that- that's a very inspirational thing for a lot of us who like to write but then we don't take that extra step to actually get it done you know so uh, that's that's a great inspiration for us uh, i just want to check with the viewers if uh, we're all uh, we're all good and y'all y'all are able to follow the conversation because i had a message from someone saying they're not able to access uh, i hope everyone is able to follow the conversation okay i think it should be fine um so now my next question is what drew you to choose goa as the setting for your novel and can you tell us something about your personal connection or fascination with the place uh, so basically uh, i mean as uh, i i'm from basically from a place uh, close to udupi in the coastal town of udupi Right. so for us like as we are growing up uh, goa was a place to go to our temples like we have a deep uh, family roots in goa like for us it's goa meant uh, temples we, we didn't go to the other side of goa where uh, we party we have beaches nightlife and all those things we are clueless about it till probably when i reached my college and we started going out with our friends and all those things right. so uh, so that uh, so initially that was one phase of goa which i saw and then once after i went out with friends that was different phase of goa which, which i saw and i think in my uh, early 2000s i started following football and I, i think in india goa is one of the very few states which are very uh, what do you say um, they are very passionate about their football so uh, the rest of the country most places you find cricket but goa is one place goa kerala etc they are like very passionate about football and also it has got like very strong uh, portuguese links right so they were here till uh, i think 1960s so uh, even after post independence they were here so i think goa has like different layers it's like uh, dif- there are different facets of uh, life in goa different uh, it has different shades so i wanted to explore that because like as i was growing up i happened to see different uh, goa in a different angle so i thought why not uh, club them together and try to put a story so that it it would be interest because i know uh, everyone likes to go to goa so uh, i just wanted to i thought that why not give a different angle to goa and make uh, uh, viewers think there is much more to goa than just a party place and night life and getting your scooties and yeah. hanging out yeah that's that's true i mean you know uh, giving that a uh, different uh, take is is a very interesting uh, concept that you have come up with um i'd like to know a little bit about your uh, writing process mm-hmm. how do you approach developing ideas now you said you had this idea about writing something with goa in mind but how did you approach developing it and creating a very compelling narrative so uh, basically i mean for uh, uh, for both the books it was pretty uh, a bit different mm-hmm. when i started my first book uh, story behind the notes that was the first time i was getting into writing right and uh, i i when i started i thought like i should write something about music because both me and my wife are very passionate about music we do a lot of jamming we got a lot of friends in music industry and i always wanted to and uh, in fact like uh, there were times when i actually participated in these reality shows etc when that was the rage in early 2000s i mean mid 2000s oh, wow. when these indian idols yeah, yeah. so uh, as it was picking up i i thought like why not write something because there are so many people lakhs and lakhs of people who participate 
and uh, hardly few of them win but we don't know uh, even people who participated or what they are doing now right even people who have won like they just disappear into thin air yeah. and next year another uh, uh, next version comes like next episode comes so it's like uh, it's pre- because they dedicate they dedicate more than a year of their life to this right so they it's a big bit of a struggle for them and i don't know so many hundreds of people have come and gone and thousands of people are still struggling so i thought we should try some i mean i should write something on okay. it uh, so that's yeah that was the idea behind it so i i knew i should end up in a, on a positive note so that i can uh, tell my uh, readers that despite all the hardships and struggles if you give your best shot uh, there is always a hope Yes. you can always succeed yeah like it might be uh, the wait might be longer but uh, there is some hope there like you, you, you need to get you need to stay steady and you need to stay focused you will definitely win some day yeah so that was a thought behind it so i started uh, how i mean the enthusiastic youngster uh, getting into a reality show i started from that and i ended saying uh, he becomes a musician and i he steps it his food into music industry so that was my starting and beginning but in between it's all about struggles ups and downs and uh, yes. sorrows and like happiness happy moments etc so eventually i built my uh, table of content and start uh, evolving that but with time the story i mean the my toc might change uh, it might evolve uh, as my thought process change but yeah overall i'll have a, a fair idea that's where you begin yeah yeah, yeah. i'll have a fair idea that was how i went about my first book for yeah. the second book like as i told you right like uh, once i wrapped up and uh, the uh, reviews and uh, the feedbacks was pretty positive mm-hmm. people like uh, my way of writing i mm-hmm. mean i i don't follow uh, like a regular writers so i mean uh, i i usually look into more like a conversation kind of writing so people kind of connect you you feel like you are actually going through that phase yeah. right so uh yeah. that's how i started p- the p- the feedbacks were positive so i thought I, this time i should write something on goa okay. because uh, i have some uh, like links on goa and as i told you yeah. it, goa is a place which actually kind of uh, fa- i mean i'm quite fantasized about the place right. even we uh, before wedding we went rent a like uh, bachelor's there yeah. and like we've been there like lot of time we keep going to goa like with with parents to our temples and with my wife or friends to party yes. so i like go, going to goa so i thought like let me give it a shot yeah and you would you say that it's also easy to write about something that you really feel connected to rather than picking up something which is uh, you know a little more uh, uh, it's always easier for us to internalize and write would you say that obviously a, yeah no ob- obviously you see uh, as i i mean uh, the thing is when you know that about the place or about the subject it becomes a bit easy but yes. that is just 20 25% of the job done you need to do your research right. like say i i might have been to goa i might have seen goa but when you are writing something and when you are documenting it and when pe- readers are actually reading what you have written uh, it's your responsibility to do your proper research proper groundwork i have actually been to goa during the writing process uh, visited some of the places again just to get the flavor of it and yeah. like for example uh, i went to the russian colony i went to morjem beach mm-hmm. which i had not been before so mm-hmm. i wanted to get because like you, you can write uh, just like that but if you go go and visit the place meet yeah. some people you you can actually feel it and yeah. that feeling comes uh, gets portrayed in your book in your writing style so so one of the uh, audience uh, viewer question that i just saw come up is uh, any memorable experience you can share with us uh, uh, about when uh, Uh, from the experience you had while you were researching for your book maybe in goa any any specific incident or experience oh yes so, so basically uh, i was staying in a hostel so basically i went uh, i think 4 5 months before okay. uh, uh, before publishing this book before my book got uh, went for publishing and uh, i i mean 3 4 days i actually we had gone from our office mm-hmm. so 3 4 days i st- uh, stayed there with my office friends and then i said you guys carry on and i uh, extended my leave and i went to the other part of goa initially 3 4 days i was in south goa but my story is uh, like has a bit of flavor of north goa then it comes to bottled down to south goa okay. so i went to the north goa the i went stayed in a hostel mm-hmm. there i met uh, one uh, 
uh, one this uh, i mean i was staying in a hostel there was a guy who was uh, who, who was serving there like in the in the restaurant he was okay. serving there and uh, he was from northeast and i don't i don't remember his name he was there for just one day <laughs> same day he was going but as i was sitting right he was he was very talkative and he was kind of very friendly guy um, probably in his mid 20s and he had just started working but due to some issues he had to go back to his hometown and uh, he told me that when i was telling him that uh, it came out like i i i am writing something on goa could you help me i was trying to get insight from everyone who i was meeting yeah. because they can give you their feedback right so this yeah. day actually gave me a lot of photos like i wanted to know some of the casinos and some of the places where uh, uh, these like russians stay there their colony he actually showed me the photos yeah. and showed me some of the inst- told me some of the instances his experience and all those things i mean i sat with that guy for more than two and a half hours like discussing all these things okay. i mean i unfortunately i don't remember his name i had taken down actually but somehow i missed i mean i feel really guilty about that i wanted to mention it but it missed out with time <laughs> okay, maybe, yeah, maybe but watching this insta live session yeah, who maybe, knows maybe maybe hopefully uh, i i mean i, I honestly i feel very thankful to that guy he's, he's helped me a lot in just two and a half hours he saved at least couple of days of mine wonderful wonderful yeah. and um, one more audience question is uh, could you share with us in brief what the book is about uh, the three three shoes and a flip flop and may i say that i love the title it's a, it's a great title yeah actually um, so the book is about uh, i mean it was it's it revolves around one person who actually he who stays with his parents he is like just graduating and uh, but he's got very kind of uh, his parents are very dominating they, they are not comfortable him traveling going out but now that he is graduating he wants to explore he wants to rediscover himself and he makes a plan he has like good set of friends four five friends with whom he wants to go uh, but last minute as always happens people his friends ditches uh, they they decide to drop the plan and because he is like so frustrated and he want he had high hopes from the trip he go decides to go alone okay. so he goes on a solo backpack and stays and because he is going for the first time he has like kind of uh, uh, he does his homework like where to stay what to do because he is very scared initially right. uh, he's not been out before and there he goes and stays in a hostel where uh, he also happens to meet these three other people so uh one of them is a portuguese with some roots with them with some indian roots okay and uh, one russian who's come uh, in search of her boyfriend mm. and another uh, pandit like young pandit guy who's come for a uh, what do you say uh, temple rituals so mm. these guys happen to uh, they meet and how their uh, what do you say um, eventually friendship blossoms between them and how their lives impact each other's lives and how each one of them happen to uh, rediscover a uh, different uh, what do you say uh, way to life like how they look at life they, uh, it completely changes yeah 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 it's more about self discovery actually excellent excellent and uh, would you also share with us uh, the story behind or what how you came up with the title of the book because so, it's quite uh, it's a quite a catchy so i mean uh, this i i should say i i mean the credit goes to my wife uh, we were thinking lo- i mean we were doing uh, brainstorming on the title because uh, usually i'll tell you the uh, when we have si- such stories right uh, mm-hmm. wherein people travel wherein people go out between friends usually uh, you will have three people like mm-hmm. say be it movies be it stories you you might know there is a book called amigos uh, you you might know you might see dil chahta hai dil chahta it's between three guys right you know this zindagi na mein likhi dobara it's been three guys so there is some whenever these stories come up you will find three guys story between three guys so mine had four characters so it, i wanted to try something and we were brainstorming lot of names and finally uh, because it's beach right you yeah. kind of walk on the beach and you remove your shoes and we were brainstorming something why, then my why is it why not uh four shoes or something so i said four shoes sounds a bit uh off like we should add something else so then is okay why not three shoes and a flip flop so that it will give some different angle also it's and when actually great yeah. title great title sorry yes yeah it's a great title thanks 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 a lot <laughs> thanks yeah. and a lot of your viewers wanted to know how you came up with it which is why i wanted you to share that 
And um, so uh, what, what are some of the responses you have received so far from the readers of uh, Three Shoes and a Flip Flop? Uh, the response has been really good, actually. I mean, uh, it's, ha I mean, honestly, first and foremost, I'm happy that uh, f my dad happened to read the book and he completely, he's, he's not a, he often, he doesn't read fiction books, but he, he was the first one to kind of sit in our own place. He had come for the book launch. He okay. came and he sat, re read through the entire book and he was so happy. And uh, that was kind of, that kind of gave me a big, uh, what do you say, uh, when when he said it's good, I mean I actually buy it because right. and him and like my brother reads a lot. So, uh, he's a voracious reader and he has a big collection of books. Mm. And when he said, I mean these uh, small things, right? It kind of uh, gives you uh, confidence. Totally. And then eventually, right after like say first one week, people probably were uh, taking time to read. Mm. But after that, the uh, the kind of feedbacks I'm getting has been like really good. So very, very happy about it. And it's also kind of uh, motivates me to continue writing. Yeah. Like, I, in fact, like some of them even uh, said that <laughs> it kind of uh, reminds us of uh, Chetan Bhagat kind of writing, which is okay. a big compliment. I mean, honestly, I, if you ask me, I mean, I I like reading Ashwin Sanghi, Christopher Dial kind of uh, uh, books. Mm -hmm. But one thing I, I genuinely feel is like uh, Chetan Bhagat is one guy who writes extremely simple language. Yeah. And uh, and his books can be completed in hardly four or five hours. Yes. And uh, it's because of that, probably so many people actually, especially the first time readers, they yes. are not scared to read his book. Right. So right. I think if I feel that is that serves the purpose, right? Because right. I actually want to kind of target that uh, audience who want who are, aren't scared to read because yeah. Yeah. language, anyone can uh, give you high language, but uh, it should connect to a big mass of people who should come and read. The common people should come and read and kind of enjoy the, mm -hmm. uh, they should feel like they are part of the story. So that's, that was the main target. So when someone actually said uh, it reminded them of uh, Chetan Bhagat kind of writing, I was like really pleased. That's a, that's a wonderful compliment. And you have brought up a very valid point that many times people don't pick up books because it's not very relatable or it's, uh, you know, language right. Also, it's too much to process. So, yeah. yes, so I think uh, what you said is a very valid point, even for those who have joined and who would like to uh, try their hand at writing. So that's a, that's a very uh, good point that uh, you have shared. Um, so uh, this is, again, a question which I ask. It's a two-part question. One is, uh, do you write every single day? And how do you stay motivated and overcome the writer's block when it strikes? The very menacing writer's block. Uh, so I uh, honestly, I don't write every single day. <laughs> it's too much to ask. Yeah. So what I do is like once, I mean, uh, once I get my book published, I take a break of like a couple of months, one, one and a half months. I enjoy the, uh, what do you say? Uh, trying to like getting the feedbacks, getting the critics and reading about, I mean, reading about it, speaking to people about my book, etc. So it's a break from writing and like for now, I think another one, one and a half months, I won't be uh, getting into okay. new book. But uh, then I usually uh, try to spend at least three to four days a week in writing, even if it's like few lines mm -hmm. and uh, three to four days, I read a uh, similar uh, genre books. Oh which kind of helps me to kind of uh, uh, give some ideas, open up to some newer dimensions uh, in writing. So okay. that's what I usually do. And uh, weekends I dedicate uh, a lot uh, on writing. I mean, uh, at least three, four hours. Okay. Uh, that's how I usually go about it. And when, I mean, yeah, when I have mental blocks, uh, author's blog, I mean, it's, it's tough, but th that is, those are sometimes when I totally cut off from it and I try to read a lot <laughs> because uh, reading doesn't need anything, right? So you just, uh, pick any random book which and some author which you like and kind of read. Uh, eventually, uh, you'll feel a bit more relaxed. And once you are conf I mean, in a better state of mind, you should again start uh, writing. And also, music helps me a lot. So, okay. whenever I'm stressed, I listen to music, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, it kind of eases off my mind. And again, I should kind of write, get into writing. Great. So this is something, it's interesting because this is something a lot of authors have shared that uh, when there is the writer's block, sometimes it's good to step away from it and then yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, come back to it and then you look at it with fresh eyes. 
you know so that's that's nice to hear that from you as well and um, you did share a couple of your favorite authors with us anybody more anyone else that you uh, read quite uh, um uh, frequently and uh, i also was quite um, uh, uh, you know uh, uh, pleasantly surprised to hear that you do read similar genres while you're writing your book so that you get that sort of inspiration as well so any yes. any particular writer that you you mentioned chetan bhagat anybody else oh uh, i mean i read lot of i mean a uh, lot of other something if i i mean uh, while browsing if i find some catchy topic uh, i usually go by the title of the book and some like the back side about the gist of the book if i find something interesting i pick it up i mean irrespective of the author like i like uh, some of savi sharma's book okay. and i like preeti shan actually preeti shan is one lady i think uh, in initial days when i, st I was started uh, reading again i think probably 2016 17 during engineering and mba i had to i was totally cut off from reading as well but uh, then again i got that habit of reading uh, thanks to one of my friend deepak who is I, I also he reads a lot mm -hmm. i was gifting him a book and eventually he had that book already so he said you keep it for yourself and you read the book okay. so that's how i started reading again okay. and uh, once i went to a, a bookstore and i found this uh, like one of the books of preeti shana and her because i'm bharat shana right i found her like sir i didn't know about preeti shana before i didn't know she is a very famous author bangalore based nothing so i just saw that okay some shino has written let, let me pick this book and i started reading it okay. it was very nice i mean i then i got to know she is quite popular and like so one of the big names in the industry mm -hmm. so that's how i started so priti shino is also like i like and amish and i like this kind of genre actually uh, uh, your uh, ashwin sanghi christopher doyle Okay. You mix history, mythology, and uh, current uh, this thing, right? So it kind of mix and match of all. So these are some of the guys I kind of follow quite frequently. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> and um, what do you hope your readers should take away from three three shoes and a flip flop? What is your hope as an author? Well. Uh, as an author i think uh, i wanted to convey few message one uh, friendship is extremely important in your life mm -hmm. i mean you i mean of course you will have lot of uh, you will have your own family you will you might get married and post marriage you will have all sorts of things going on right but friends are something which we kind of uh, treasure all our life especially few ones which who get really close i think uh, that kind of impact and they stand by you uh, for most of your life so i that is one message i wanted to give uh, stay by your friends and uh, second thing i wanted to say that i wanted to mention ki uh, when you say goa uh, go i mean of course you can go and party in goa you can uh, take your higher year scooties and like go and have beers have fun by the beach but that that is only one phase of goa because goa has a lot of things to offer and it's a beautiful place uh, with rich heritage and as you get into it right I, i mean i also mentioned about one temple here in the book uh, so because that pandit character is linked to that temple there mm. so which also eventually is like one uh, uh, we as a family right we go to the, those temples quite often so, uh, so some of the things with in that it's like uh, centuries old temple and it's got like really good things which people should know so i think these thing these small things right which kind of uh, uh, kind of motivates the younger generation to act, might actually go visit temple also temples also because as good i mean go, having parties is as important as going to temples as well temples or any place for that matter what you sorry sunday is uh, that you should have a good balance in life exactly neither, exactly neither extremes but have a good balance correct 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 exactly exactly you should have a right balance and it gives you i mean see uh, this gives you one dimension of life while that gives you different dimension and you should have a mix of both so that it will help you as a person to grow as a person and i think it's a very very important message uh, in this day and age because you know there Correct. there is so much of distraction and there is that extra uh, danger of going away going to the extremity so you know uh, it's it's a very very good message and um, our uh, aud audience wants to know is there a new book in the making as we speak any upcoming projects that you can share with us 
Oh yes, I mean uh, we have thought. I think next book uh, most likely I'll uh, co-author with my wife. Uh, so uh, currently, I mean it's too early to speak about. But yes, I mean I'm pr- planning to get into it uh, probably in a month's time. Okay. Start doing my research from month's time, and uh, maybe uh, you can expect it by next year end, hopefully. So it, because it will take it, this this subject needs some research. Okay. it's uh, it's a, it has little bit of i mean uh, little bit of history into it and also little bit of uh, current current era about it so it might need some research and may need some travel so yeah may, probably hopefully by next year end you should get it super that's great news to us and yeah. uh, any words of inspiration encouragement that you can share for aspiring writers uh listen to your mind do i mean uh people i mean when you start writing or when you start doing anything like if you are taking a uh say unexplored path mm-hmm. if you are doing something different from what uh, anyone else is doing then there are people who will criticize you there are people who will uh, make fun of you there are people who will support you and there are people who will ab- ignore you but uh stay to yourself stay focused uh it i mean you are bound to fail you are bound to fail once twice thrice four times i god knows how many times but some day it will click so like i mean uh, like for example my first book was decent uh, but the reviews have been improving now and i'm sure like with time i'm beat anyone like beat a business uh, business person or beat uh, say movie maker like all these guys they go through uh, their own struggles they go through their own hurdles right so but eventually some day if you keep, stay motivated some day it will click so stay focused excellent anything else you would like to add uh, before we conclude this uh, session it's been a wonderful insightful uh, session with you bharat i personally have taken a lot of important points uh, away from this interaction with you i've thoroughly enjoyed it is there anything you would like to share with your uh, fans uh, uh, honestly uh, i i mean i don't know i don't want to call them my fans <laughs> it's it's my I, honestly it's a, it's my pleasure to have people reading my books because end of the day people if someone reads our books right that's how well it helps us to grow right so that's how it motivates us to write again so uh, thanks a lot uh, readers whoever is reading and who, if someone is uh, listening to me now or if someone will listen to me later on uh, thanks for reading uh, reading the book thanks for kind of motivating me and thanks for any kind of support you have provided me uh it's kind of very very helpful and it's it's a big driving force for me thanks a lot thank you bharat thank you so much for uh, joining us today and all of us at clever fox uh, are thrilled to have you as one of our uh, 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 very cherished authors and we wish you all the best with this book and we look forward to ha- to uh, you know your next projects and your next uh, books in the future so and thank you everyone for joining us all those who joined us today i hope you all had a wonderful time uh, listening to bharat uh, where he has shared uh, thoughts on his journey as a writer his uh, his thoughts on life and also his writing process and uh, i hope all of you had a great time thank you thanks thank you and thanks everyone bye bye